Heat is the transfer of energy from one object to another due to a difference in temperature. We say objects that have a high temperature are hot and objects with a low temperature are cold. When two items are combined or touching each other, their molecules will transfer energy called heat. They will try to come to a point where they both have the same temperature. Today, we will discuss the different methods of heat transfer in different materials. And so, welcome to my channel, it's Edu TV. Our lesson today is about heat transfer in different materials, a science grade for lesson. Our learning competency, describe how light, sound, and heat travel. Our learning objectives are Identify the method of heat transfer that takes place in a given situation. Number two, show willingness to do simple activities that involve the different methods of heat transfer. And three, demonstrate the different methods of heat transfer by performing simple activities. Can you identify things that produce heat? Stove Yes Sun Yes Bicycle No Bulb Yes And cabinet no. This time, let's explore and discover. I made a set of activities for you. But please try to follow these few reminders. Do not do the activity if your parents or guardians or elder siblings are not present. Prepare all the needed materials with the assistance of your parents before doing the activity. Be careful in handling hot objects. Follow the instructions in each activity very carefully and clear your working area after doing the activity. The title of our first activity is How is heat transferred in solid materials? You will need the following, a thermos filled with hot water, metal spoon, coffee, mug, and a timer. Procedure Number 1 Pour hot water in the mug. Please ask your mother or father or elder siblings to assist you. Number 2 Put the metal spoon into the mug for 5 minutes. And then, be careful in touching the exposed end of the spoon. Carefully touch the outside surface of the mug too. Guide questions. After 5 minutes, what happened to the exposed end of the spoon? What did you observe about the outside surface of the mug when you touched it? What could be inferred from this activity? Activity 2. How does heat travel through liquid materials? Observe the picture showing mongo seeds being boiled in water and then answer each question with yes or no. What do you think will happen to these mongo seeds when boiled in water? Will they move in a circular movement when boiled? What happened to the temperature of the water after 5 minutes? Did the temperature of the water rise? What happened to the water at the bottom of the casserole when it was heated? Did it move and push the mongo seeds upward? What conclusion can you make based from the activity? A 
Activity 3. How does heat travel through air? Materials. You need a margarine or a broken crayon, spoon, a small plastic plate, and a sunny area. Procedure. Get some portion of a margarine or a broken crayon using a spoon and put it on a small plate. So if there's no margarine at home, then you can use crayon. Place the plate under the sun for at least 20 to 30 minutes. What happened to the margarine or the crayon after it was exposed to the heat of the sun? Did it, did it melt? What do you think made the change on the margarine or the crayon? Was it because of heat? What conclusion can you make based from the activity? Heat is the transfer of energy from one object to another from an energy source to an object. Heat transfer can occur in three ways, conduction, convection, and radiation. The cold end of the spoon got heated when the other end was submerged in the mug with hot water. This also shows that the heat from the mug was transferred to the submerged end of the spoon, then traveled to the exposed end. We can infer from the activity that heat travels from hot object to cold object. This transfer of heat is called conduction. The transfer of heat in solid materials is called conduction. The heat from the candle makes the atoms of the bottom nail to vibrate faster. Conduction is the heat transfer through a substance or from a substance to another. There are materials that allow heat to pass through easily. We call them conductors. Metals are good conductors. That's why we use them as cooking utensils because heat moves fast through metals. There are materials through which heat passes slowly or not at all. We call these insulators. Some good insulators are wood, plastic, and ceramics. Our next method of heat transfer is called convection. Heat travels in air and water by convection. When mango was heated, the seeds started to jump after a few minutes. When water was heated at the bottom of the casserole, it moved up pushing the mango seeds. As heat is continuously applied, the seeds are moving faster and faster. This movement is due to the currents formed within the fluid. Try to examine this setup. Two jars with one on top of the other. The red jar is warmer and the blue jar is colder. A cardboard separates the two. What do you think will happen if you remove the cardboard? Now, watch this video. This video shows that when liquid or gas is heated, the molecules of the heated part move faster and faster away from each other. As a result, the heated material becomes less dense or lighter. The colder air above is denser and heavier so it goes down and pushes the hot air upward. The cold air is then heated and becomes lighter. It is pushed upward by the colder, heavier air above. 
In this way, the entire liquid or gas becomes evenly heated. This method of heat transfer is called convection. This is also true with winds and breezes. Warm air rises, expands and cools. Cool air sinks. Convection is the reason why we have wind movements and local breezes. During daytime, air over land is heated. It rises and expands. Cool air over the sea moves towards the land. That is why you feel a refreshing breeze by the seaside during daytime. What is radiation? The margarine or crayon on the plate melts after it was exposed to the heat of the sun. There was no physical contact, but the margarine or crayon is heated by the sun. This means that the heat has the ability to travel in empty space or vacuum. Heat from the sun reaches the earth by traveling across millions of kilometers of empty space. Heat travels in waves as it moves from an area of high temperature to an area of low temperature. This is why you can feel the sun's rays even if the sun is very far away. Radiation is a method of heat transfer without the use of moving molecules. It is a manner by which waves of radiant energy such as light, infrared, or ultraviolet travel through space. These waves can travel through vacuum. When the heat radiation coming from the sun reaches the earth, radiant energy is converted to heat energy. The earth is warmed by absorbed heat. The more heat is absorbed, the warmer the temperature on earth becomes. Your house gets warm when the sun's waves or rays travel through a window and are trapped in your house. Heat waves are invisible. All warm objects radiate or give off heat waves. Some other examples of heat transfer by radiation are the heat you feel when you are near a fire source, the heat given off by an electric heater, and the heat near an oven. Drop it.